Hello and welcome, this is Matt McCall. Thanks for joining me for another episode of Making Money. And you might feel like you're not making much money the last couple of weeks as we had the S&P hit into correction territory on Monday. We already had the NASDAQ in correction territory. We had some of the ETFs get absolutely crushed. However, they finished the day in the green. One of the biggest turnarounds we've seen in many, many years. We need to talk about that. We need to talk about the markets this morning opening a little bit lower, but there's so much going on. Uh, this is tar- part of you know where I get paid the big bucks to hold your hand to get you through this. But a lot of great statistics coming your way. A must watch show all coming up now. Again, this is Matt McCall. Thanks for joining me here and making money. It is Tuesday, January 25th, 2022. A little bit of a different background here. So uh, I apologize for always changing it up. I'm actually on a little mini vacation, so I wasn't going to do a show today, but I figured the way the markets are moving right now, there's no way I can let my subscribers, my followers not get a bit of insight into what's going on because these are the times that really make or break your portfolio, not just in the short term, folks, but over the long term. So this is something to me where this is why I do what I do. This is why I'm here. I'm here to help you hold your hand through this. I mean, I wish I could snap my fingers and make it better and say, oh, the market's at an all time high and so is your portfolio. But that's not reality. So we must deal with the hand that we're dealt. And right now, that hand is a bit of volatility, uh, quite a bit of pullback that we saw on Monday to the level where the capitulation, I think, is here, uh, if not very, very close. We'll talk about that in a minute. Fear levels, as measured by the VIX, the CBOE volatility index, spiking. We'll talk about that coming up as well. So a lot to talk about, a lot of statistics. And we need to take a look at where things are today, but also look at them in a big picture and look in the past and how markets have reacted after we've been in instances just as this. So we have a lot to talk about, and I'm going to keep kind of referring over here, to be honest with you, because I have my computer set up over here with a ton of notes for us to go over. But, you know, what I just want to give you a bit of a a quote, um, and this is something I try to live by. And, you know, one of the best investment strategies is to buy good companies for the long term that are beaten down by short term worries. And I've said that probably 50 different ways. And I used to say back in the day, you never want to base your long term investment decision on short term factors. And unfortunately, too many long term investors will do that. It may be based on, oh, my goodness, the Fed's going to start raising rates. Let's sell all my stocks. Um, It could be, oh, my goodness, inflation is here. Let's sell all my stocks. And yes, interest rates are something that could continue to go up for years. Inflation could stay high for a while, but more short term. Or if you want to get even shorter, more troops, uh, Russian troops on the border of Ukraine. Oh, my goodness, let's get out. And I'm going to show you some geopolitical concerns we've had over the last couple of years and really how uh, we could take a look at that and and realize that over time, uh, maybe short term effects, But long term, typically, you're not going to see that. So something to really keep an eye on. So let me pull up here. Let's just pull up the markets here for a minute. Uh, We'll take a look at the S&P 500 and just give you an idea of what happened yesterday, because it was was really quite fascinating uh, that what took place uh, yesterday. I mean, quite such a turnaround. And you can see right here, uh, this is yesterday. Um, we had a couple of big down days closing near the lows of the session. And then suddenly we, we broke way below price support, way below the 200 day moving average, but rallied all the way back. We have not seen that type of snapback uh, in, in a very long time. You know, the S&P was down at 1.3.99%. Let's call it 4% at the lows of the day. If we go back to 1950, folks, there have been 80 other days uh, at which the, the index was down that much at one point. This was only the third time of 88 days, third time since 1950, you know, looking back 72 years, that it closed higher um, after that. Now, the other two happened in October 2008. Give you an idea of October 2008, that was kind of the, uh, the heart of the um, financial crisis. And remember, we bottomed in March, very early March. So there wasn't too much more downside after that, uh, but there was a lot of volatility going on at that time uh, and a lot of speculation. Typically, you're going to have days like we had yesterday when there's speculation. So we saw that uh, yesterday. It's tough to look. You know, I don't even look at one day or one week. It doesn't make a chart. Uh, A level I would like to see hold is 4,300. You can see here, this is the low that we pulled back to. Uh, end of September, early October. So if we can hold that 4,300 level, I I think that would be uh, really important uh, for the markets. 
Uh, but let me turn over right now because we just had the markets open here uh, Tuesday morning. So we'll take a look at the SPIs, which is trading live, and we're down about 1.5%. So we're pulling back a little bit, nowhere near the lows of yesterday. But again, so much can happen between now and the close. And again, for right around that level is around 429, 430, and we're at 433 right now. So something to keep an eye on. But again, it's not the end all be all. Uh, but it is something that we definitely uh, want to keep an eye on as we move forward. So uh, that's the S&P 500. Let's take a look now at the at the NASDAQ. I'll pull up the NASDAQ 100, the, the Qs, QQQ is a symbol. We can see very similar action yesterday, but that's down now today, 1.85%. Again, markets just opened a couple of minutes ago. So this is, we could be all over the place by the end of the session. But what I want to show you down here too is this is the volume. Look how big the volume was. Uh, we haven't had volume this high in a very long time. So the Qs, the QQQ, they traded um, about 192.2 million shares yesterday. Uh, that's about four times its daily average volume. Uh, it experienced the highest trading volume in over 10 years since August 10th of 2011. The S&P, SPYs, they ended with trading about 252 and a half million shares yesterday. It's about three times its daily average and it was the highest volume since March 25th of 2020, which was right in the heart of the pandemic when things were starting. So that makes sense as well. So we are seeing, you know, massive, massive volume. And from a historical standpoint and from a pure psychological standpoint, typically when we have the markets fall like that and there's huge volume, that is what we call capitulation. That means we've got to the, to the, to the time frame where not just individual investors, but institutional investors, they're throwing in a towel. And what, what happens a lot of times is it's not even that there's just not that, that, that there's overwhelming selling, which there is, but there's a lack of buyers as well. There's nobody waiting to, to buy that other side. So that's why it, it falls so, so, so quickly. That being said, there's suddenly a point where the selling kind of dries up, which was yesterday afternoon, and there's no more sellers. So the buyers come in, start picking up. And so it quickly goes up because there's nobody in selling. So boom, 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 boom. The bid ask continues to increase the entire time. So that that's kind of explains what happened yesterday. These, these violent uh, moves one side to the other. What I'd like to see too is look a little bit, you know, pull back the onion a little bit further, pull back a couple more layers and look at some other, not as often looked at um, uh, statistics, let's call it. One, one thing that, that, I, that I like to look at here is the, uh, the put call ratio. So what this is, it takes the amount of puts out there and the amount of calls out there on the S&P 500. If you're buying a put, it means you're bearish. You're buying call, you're bullish. So you take a contrarian view to this. The put call ratio spiked uh, to the highest level since 2020, since the pandemic, which means, again, people got extremely bearish yesterday. And again, that is typically contrarian views. When that spikes, it's typically at or near a market low. It's just what the history says. It's not me and folks, it's what history says. Then we take a look at the VIX, which is a CBOE volatility index. And I'll pull it up on a chart here for you. Uh, as you can see here, this is the, the VIX. This is yesterday. We don't have any, any ticks here for today, but you can see yesterday how it spiked. The only other time we've been up in that level recently was back in uh, October, November of last year, which was had to do with uh, a rise in um, COVID cases. But let me zoom out a little bit because I just want to show how significant this level is. This obviously we spiked there. That was when the pandemic began. Outside of that, typically if we spike to around 40, that's about as high as we get until the market starts pulling back a little bit. And again, let me zoom out even further to give you an idea of just how important a spike is. Again, these are all about the same level where we hit yesterday. This is above the level of 2018. We had that spike here uh, in, in 2018 as well, a very, very quick spike. This at the 2018 was when we had uh, about a 19.5% pullback in the S&P 500 at the end of the year, and then we ended up having a huge rally. Uh, so again, around the same level. So as you can see, the, this type of spike that we're seeing here in the VIX is significant because it is at a level uh, that you don't see very often. And it typically, typically, not all the time, coincides again with at least a short-term bottom. Uh, another chart I wanna show you here real quick is the Russell 2000, it's a small mid-cap index. And it broke through this, remember we talked about this range forever, it broke through it. However, yesterday it outperformed the large caps. And a lot of times when you're near market bottom, you will see uh, the smaller caps start to lead first. And, and we saw that uh, yesterday. So again, all very short-term uh, indicators, if you will. Uh, but what it's showing me, though, is that based on history, 
there's a lot of factors falling in place that indicate that we are due for a bit of a bounce. And, you know, everybody's going to ask me, well, Matt, what caused this? Well, it could be the fear of interest rates going higher. Goldman Sachs came out this week and said, I think over the weekend, actually, uh, originally they were calling for three interest rate hikes a few months ago. Then they said four. Now they said they could possibly have five interest rate hikes from the Fed. That spooked people a little bit. We have Ukraine and Russia. We don't know what's going on there. Um, it, you know, troops are piling up um, on the on the border. So that's something I think we need to keep an eye on as well. Th there's just there's a lot of things going on out there right now. We have people calling for earnings season. It's not going to be as good. We're really about to get in the heart of earnings season. We have Microsoft after the bell today. Um, we've had a lot of financials last week. So far, they've been pretty decent, to be honest with you. So historically speaking, I, I don't see that as an issue. I, I don't see any true underlying fundamentals that are breaking down. You know, the argument will be, well, Matt, the Fed's going to pull away the punch bowl. They are. I, I just, I'm not disagreeing with that. And was that helping inflate some values? Absolutely, folks. The, the problem I have with saying, okay, it's over because of that. Granted, we just went into correction levels in the, in the S&P and the NASDAQ, S&P just yesterday, NASDAQ last week, that if you take away the big names, there are so many stocks in the NASDAQ right now that are not only in correction territory, not only in bear market territory, but have literally lost half their value. So were they overvalued at the level of the high of last year? Sure, you can, you can make that case, absolutely. Are they extremely undervalued at this level? Yes, absolutely. What you need to keep in mind though is you don't go get to under, under, or oversold levels or, or undervalued levels and just bounce. We have extremes. When we rally, we rally to extremes. When we sell off, we sell off to extremes. Now we live in a very irrational world the stock market is extremely irrational, extremely inefficient. I don't care what any economist tells you. It's not an efficient market. It truly isn't. They'll say it's efficient because there's buyers and sellers who make it up. Yeah, sure. But if it's efficient, you know all the data. We all have access to the same data. That's just BS. That's just not true. We don't. Uh, there's a lot of individual investors out there just throwing darts. Like that's not, maybe could they find the information? Yeah, but it's not an efficient market. So you will see extreme volatility. You will see emotions come into it. You will see psychology play a major part. That's why I look at the charts. The chart shows psychology. That's the buying and selling that goes on throughout the day. So I, I put together a couple of charts that I grabbed from a couple of different people and uh, just kind of go through them. It's a lot of stuff I've talked about already, but I want to go through these charts because, because, I, because I think they, they actually show a lot of really great stuff. So the first chart we're going to take a look at here, this is, this is from LPL Research, which uh, Ryan Dietrich over there is one of the greatest guys uh, when it comes to market statistics. This takes a look at geopolitical events, and it goes back uh, all the way to 1941, a Pearl Harbor attack. And, you know, COVID, uh, Iranian general killed an airstrike. I mean, you can, you can go through this on your own, but it shows the one day drawdown averaged about 1.1%. Uh, total drawdowns from the top to bottom of the S&P averaged about 6.1%. And then it shows you the days to the bottom and days for recovery. You can see how quick it is. It's usually basically three weeks to the bottom. The reason I'm showing this is just how quickly when you have geopolitical issues, you come back. And there's some pretty major issues in there, not including 9-11, Pearl Harbor, you name it. So keep that in mind. The next one we're taking a look at here, uh, this is NASDAQ Composite. And we, we, it shows uh, when it's closed higher after a 4% intraday drop. And you can see it's happened a few times since 1997. Uh, the last five times it's happened, uh, one day later, it was up 1.3, one week down to nine, uh, one month down 5.6, three months down 7.9, but one year later, 10.8% uh, average, median 26.8% up four out of five times. So a lot of times it will say there's still some short-term pain uh, around the corner. Um, so we do have some potential short-term pain around the corner. However, longer term, uh, it, it looks really, really positive. Next show I'm going to take a look at, this is great. This is from Charlie Bilello. Um, follow him on Twitter. But this shows holding periods going back to 1928, so over 90 years. And what's so important about this is if you're, it's your odds of making money in the S&P if you've held for at least one year. It's 75%. If I had the, the ability to put money somewhere and I have a 75% chance of making money, that is a hell of a probability. If I extend that up to three years, three years, you go up to 83%. Five years, 88%, 10, 93. 15 years, you have a 97% possibility of making money SMB. 
That means three out of 100 times you're not. That is a great, great odds. This is why I talk about long-term investing, folks. 20 and 30 years, you have 100% chance. 100% not guaranteed going forward, but guaranteed at that point going in the past. Even if we go to six month holding period, 71%, but it drops dramatically to one day, it's 53. So it's basically a coin toss at, at that level. My point is it's, it's about time and, and you get so worked up over short term. So please don't let that get to you. I, you need to always look back on this because you are most likely a long-term investor. This is another pretty interesting chart. This one's from Bloomberg. It shows midterm swings. Right now we are in a midterm election cycle. So this shows some swings here and it goes back to 1950 and it shows the intraday, uh, sorry, intra-year declines on the left side here. It actually averages about a 17.1% pullback from high to low during midterm election years. However, you look at returns a year later, look how impressive they are up every single time. Again, folks, we're trying to put the odds in our favor. And how do we determine odds? You look back on history. It's no different if you're betting on a football game. You see, okay, this team only wins 10% of the time when they play in the 32 degree weather, because maybe they're from the West Coast or they're playing a dome. The odds are good. It doesn't mean it's gonna happen, but the odds are good. And you put the odds in your favor. You sit down at a blackjack table, you try to put the odds in your favor by playing a certain way. I'm a numbers geek, I'm like Ray Man. I can see in my head, everything I do, I base on odds. What are the odds of this happening? Next chart. This is uh, talks about the correction being one of the fastest ever. You can see here, we went into a correction from an all time high to correction. Uh, it took us 14 days yesterday. Uh, it was 14th day, uh, how quickly it goes in. And the next chart here, this shows uh, when it moves into a correction, um, it says the SME index performance after fast corrections, which took less than a month. Uh, the next three months up every time, next six months, every time, next 12 months, all every time but one. You can see when you have these very quick, it goes back to 95, 97, 98, 2000, 2018, 2020, uh, 2000, uh, yeah, uh, 2020. Again, just putting odds in our favor. And I'm not going through this and just picking and choosing the bullish ones. This last chart here is very important. This shows that corrections happen, again, this is from LPO, uh, happen about once a year on average. Look at this, once a year on average. We didn't have one since 2020, so we had one now. They do tend to go in clusters, as you can see. You know, this is a cluster here, a little cluster here. And, and again, a correction, just for everybody doesn't know, is a pullback of 10% to 20%. So around that, that level. It could be more than that. Uh, but usually about 10, 10, to, uh, 10 to 20%. Once it's 10%, it goes in a correction. Over 20%, uh, the mark, we call them a bear market. I want to take a look at one more chart here. And this is of the uh, ARC Innovation Fund. And I like to look at this often because innovation to me is not dead. Uh, have the stocks been beaten up? Yes. And it's back down 4.6% today after a huge turnaround. It was down over 13% at one point, rallied back to positive territory. Uh, biggest volume it's ever had yesterday, biggest turnaround one day it's ever had yesterday. Uh, but again, we're not getting a follow through. We're down over 4% right now. So the next couple of days are going to be important because if we, if we break through yesterday's low, that's that's not a good sign. That means we're probably going to have some more weakness uh, for next uh, month or so, uh, or at least a lot of volatility. Uh, if we would have had follow through today, it would have been much better, in my opinion. Uh, that being said, I, I might dabble a little bit and buy a little bit today because I, I, I feel like we were just so close to that capitulation bottom that I want to I want to jump in and start picking up some some shares of stocks that I, I think are just truly, truly beat up and even maybe added some positions uh, that I own right now. So, you know, I, I didn't have a chance to go through some individual stocks for you here today. Uh, I, I was going to, but I, I felt like this is more important to talk about the generalization of the market, um, not to fear right now. Uh, one, one of the articles I was reading last night, uh, it was a guy from eToro was talking about the market, and uh, he wrote that the average um, fall for, for a, um, uh, a correction, and that the average correction lasts about seven weeks, and it falls about 16% at time frame. I've always heard a number around 13.8%. So let's call it 14 to 16%. Um, and, and, you know, we're down about probably 11 right now, give or take. So typically, if we're just going to have a correction, which I think that's what we're going to have. And I called before the year started. I said, we're probably going to have two corrections this year. That's double what we didn't want to have average. And, and that's because it's midterm election year. Uh, we have interest rates going up. We have a lot of unknowns. We have a lot of volatility. Uh, we still have this damn virus out there. Um, you wouldn't know in Miami because nobody wears a mask or anything down here, but we still have the damn virus out there. So there, there's a lot of unknowns. Uh, 
All that being said, I, I'm an optimist. I'm a futurist. I like to view the future as something being better. I'm, I, I don't always look for, through rose-colored glasses and, and, and ignore what's going on in front of me in the sell-off here, but I, I do look for the positives in life. It makes life a lot more fun, I'll tell you that. When I do look forward, and I look for positive negatives in the markets because I have to be able to look on both sides, but there's still a lot of positives out there. We know the Fed's going to raise rates. This isn't something they're going to surprise us on. We know that. That's a known. That's why we had a lot of volatility. It's why we had a pullback. So a lot of that's priced in, in my opinion. Um, we don't know that Omicron could be the last strain and, and we just, uh, not the last strain, but the last one that's, that's worth anything, that we could get to the point where we really start reopening. And I got to tell you, the, the places I've traveled the last couple of months, people are fed up with it. I'm fed up. I've been fed up with it. You know, go live your damn life. Uh, don't don't tell us not to live our life. And if you don't want to go out and you don't have to go out, but there's more and more people that are feeling that way. And we're going to start seeing things open. You're seeing it little by little. Some countries are starting to open. Some states are starting to open more. And uh, we're seeing it, folks. And, and that's going to be great. And if we get back to that, that's a great thing. Wages are going up. You know, inflation is going up, too. But I think that will come back and check. You know, inflation, look at, you know, used cars prices up over 35 percent year over year. So, again, I think we get to a level here very close where that has to come down. I don't think oil prices stay this high forever. That's going to come down. Uh, they've already come down a bit. You know, a lot of these these input prices will start to come down, which means. Uh, the finished product prices will come down, which means the consumer price index, the CPI indicator the government uses, will come down as well. So there, there's, a, there's a lot of factors that will get better as we go. Corporate profits are still expected to grow and come at the highest level ever. And again, stocks move ultimately on profits, on how much money the companies are making. And if you have all-time high profits, you should be near an all-time high in stocks. You put it all together, folks, and it really just adds up to this is a correction. This is a volatile market. If you panic sell now, you're guaranteed you're going to be kicking yourself in the behind. So what I would suggest is if you can't look at it, you walk away. Um, I also suggested yesterday in my daily uh, letter, go through your positions and write down next to them the reason that you bought them. And you probably should have that written down already, the reason you bought them. If that reason is still intact, okay, let it go. If that reason has changed, the business model has changed. That sector fell apart. If you bought electric vehicle companies and you think that electric vehicles are dead, we're going back to a horse and buggy, you probably sell electric vehicle companies, which is ridiculous, but that's what you might think. Also go through and ask yourself for each company, do you think they'll be bigger in a few years from now? And if you can't say yes, it's probably time to get rid of it. You say, if you do say yes, it's probably a great time to hold on to them. Do the same thing with any company or stock that you're considering buying. So again, there's a lot of things you could be doing if you want to look at it, but don't look at it in the fact of, oh my God, it's down this much. I can't lose anymore. Don't look at it. You're looking at the past. You look to the future. If you look to the future, you're going to be okay. If you look in the past, you're going to make really bad decisions. So again, folks, it's going to be rough sledding for at least a few more days and a few more weeks, maybe months, a lot of ups and downs. So buckle in. Uh, I will be back Thursday to give you an update of what's going on. Again, the market's selling off a bit after yesterday's rally, but we'll see how we close. We have a long day ahead of us. A lot can happen. Uh, but I will say, turn CNBC off, turn off Fox Business, don't watch it because all they're going to do is scare you because that's how they make their money, getting marketing, getting views. So turn that crap off. Go read a good book. I'm going to go play golf, believe it or not. I'm on a guy's trip here playing golf. So, but I wanted to get this in and get my daily out, do my research. I've been up since early this morning. That's why my voice is like this, working my ass off because even though I'm taking a couple days off, the market doesn't take days off. So I'm here for you. So again, thank you all very much. Please put your comments below, like the video, share it, uh, but stay steady. I'll be here for you. Buckle up and uh, we'll be back Thursday. But again, thank you so much for the support. I'm Matt McCall and that was Making Money. Opinions expressed on this program are solely those of the contributor and do not necessarily reflect the opinions of Stansbury Research, its parent company, or affiliates.